Hi and welcome to another DCG tutorial. So today we're working on paper, uh, 2014 paper, we're on section A, the short questions, and this is question A4. So the drawing on the right shows a particularly a partially completed perspective projection of a tennis court. A, the position of one of the vanishing points, VP2, down here, is shown, locate the other vanishing point. B, complete the perspective projection of the tennis court and net and C, determine the true length of the net, or the true height of the net. Okay, so what we have here is we have our plan of the tennis court. So we have our net going across here, again, different parts of the tennis court. Picture plane going through this corner here. Okay, and that corner is brought down. There it is there. And then our vanishing point, uh, VP2. So to find the vanishing point, if you see the green line here, to find the vanishing point, you go from the spectator a certain angle out to hit the picture plane, Project that down at your projection angle, and it'll give you the vanishing point on the horizon line. This angle is parallel to the edge of the object that you were doing your projected view of. So what you do is basically the external angles. So that was your horizontal line. So to get the VP1, we have to do our vertical line. So do a vertical line from the spectator. Straight up, and that is, as you see here, parallel to that edge there. And what you do then is project it down the same angle as the projection angle to find your VP1. So let's see if the projection angle is right now. It's not, so I'm going to use the just the set square again. Okay, so this is where it crosses the picture plane, so bring it down to the horizon line. And that is your VP1. Okay, so locate the other vanishing point, that is part of, uh, A of the question done. Okay, let me get that down. So, next, B. Complete the perspective projection of the tennis court and net. Okay, so to do perspective projection, any of these points must be connected to the spectator and where that line crosses the picture plane, you project that down. So in this case, if you look at the side of the net here, joined to the spectator, where it cuts across the picture plane, PP there, draw that down on your projection angle and it'll give you a line in the view for that point. So let's see what they've done here. So they brought down this corner of the picture plane, okay, and they've brought it back to VP2 to give you that edge. So I'm going to join it back to VP1 to get the front edge here. Okay, so to figure out where that line stops, I need the back corner here. So this point is the front point here. So it goes off to the left, goes off to the right. They've done the right line for you. So to find the left hand side here, join that point back to the spectator where it crosses the picture plane. That is the distance over you project down. So I'm projecting this point down. And where it crosses the line back to VP1, that is a point on the tennis court here. Okay, how do we find the angle of the back of the court then? Join that back to VP2. So this is VP2. Join the back point there. Okay, and that's giving you the back of the court. Now, by joining the edge of this line here, so if we just label these for two seconds, say this is point 0, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3. We have point 0 here, we have point 0.1, don't have point 0.2 yet, and this is point 0.3. So, two ways we're going to do this. If we join 3 back to VP1, we're across the line from 1, we'll give you point 0.2. Also, bringing 2 down to the spectator or across the picture plane 
check that down and the line from one will give you point two. But it's going to be the same thing, they will end up being on the same point. So just show you. Join two back to the spectator or across as the picture plane, which is here. Project that down. And this is where it crosses by line one, and that is your point two. Drawing point three back to CP1, and it's going to go through that point. Okay, so we need our line down from point two anyways. But this is just showing you that by just projecting back to the vanishing point, you'd find the point anyway. Now, this is the plan, so we have to put in the markings on the court as well. You already have the net done for you. So, um, straightforward enough. Join your points here back to the spectator, project them down, and figure out where to cross the 019 and the 23 line. So, join this front point here back to the spectator. crosses the picture plane which is here join it back down find out where it crosses line now where was it so follow it down and across and that's here join that back to your vanishing point because it was a horizontal line up here join back to the vanishing point we'll show you where it crosses the two tree line save you haven't gone through that process again same thing for the front line here Join that down to the spectator. Where it crosses the picture plane, set that down. So that's your point there. Picture plane is here. Check that down. That's where it crosses the 019. Join that back to BP2. And you'll get that line there. So next step is this line here. So this is vertical line, just like the 019. line. So 01 joins back to BP1, so this line will also join back to BP1. So if we bring the furthest point down here, this point here, we bring that down, find it in the perspective drawn, and join it back to BP1, it'll give us our line. So we'll join that point back to the spectator. Where it crosses the picture plane here, Project that down. That is your point there in the middle. Join that back to VP1 to find the same point back here. And that is part B done. So complete the perspective projection of the tennis court and net. So let's draw that in strong now and finish off part B. Okay, so that is the perspective drawing done. Uh, part C, determine the true height of the net. So our net is, is this line here, and that is brought down, and that's the net there. So know the true height of the net here. Okay, so to figure that out, true height can only be found if they're touching the picture plane, if they're resting on the picture plane. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna project Following our boundary point, we're going to project the height of that um, net down to the picture plane. So the ground line, I should say, sorry. So this is the ground line here. And if points are resting on the picture plane, then the height can be marked in off those points on the ground line. So what we're going to do is extend the angle. So let's join back to PP2, extend the angle of the line of that base point there, that base of the net, just going to put in here green, so it hits the ground line, do the same with the top point, okay, so what we're doing is extending down those two lines, this is the height of the net there, and what we're going to do is, when it hits the ground line, Use your projection angle again. Draw a 
line in 90 degrees to the ground line and now you have your height so the height is from here to there and that's your height now determine the true height of the nest so just in case measure it No scale, so we're just going to put it in the millimeters just in case it was marked allotted for indicating. Now, I didn't say indicate, it just said determine. So, to determine it, you must project it down to the ground line, and from there, you can get a true height. And it's projected back the same angle as your vanishing points to get a true height. So, that was the perspective short question. Uh, hope it helped. Uh, if it did, leave a like, and if you want to see certain topics done again, leave a comment in the comment section. Okay, thank you, and good luck. Thank you.